Does your car have an erratic idle? Does it stall at stop signs? Does it have a high RPM at idle? Is your car behaving very strangely at idle? Well, then it could be a dirty IAC valve, also known as IAC actuator. And in this video, we're going to spend about 10 minutes just cleaning it out and turning your stalling car or high RPM or erratic idling car into a nice working vehicle again. This is on a Ford Mustang GT 2003. But again, the principles in this video will apply to a lot of fuel injection vehicles that use this valve. So as promised, again, you don't need uh, many tools to do this job at all. You just need a good cleaner that will um, dissolve carbon deposits and get the gum out of the um, idle air control actuator here. So it could be throttle body cleaner, intake valve cleaner, carbon choke cleaner. This is uh, great for this. It's about $2.50, very cheap. Uh, a pipe cleaner or a toothbrush, that's just to agitate it so you can then flush it out again. And a, a socket set or screwdriver just to get the part off the vehicle. So not much required at all. So the idle air control valve, depending on the year, make and model of the car, it can be in various places, but usually around the same central area. A good uh, key to, um, sort of method in finding it is finding the uh, air filter for the air intake. Follow it all the way around, and it's usually around here or around here. So we can see the intake here. There's a little uh, line here going around, and there it is right there. And this is the power source to the valve, which makes it an actuator. Now this has many names, it's an idle air control valve, air bypass valve, IAC actuator, idle air control actuator, so various other names it actually uses. And in older carburetted vehicles, for example, then an idle speed control actuator is used. So uh, a similar job is done by something with lots of different names. And if you're confused by the term actuator, it's just a mechanical device, so like a, a valve really, but it has a power source that it's used to operate. So the power source can be electric, pneumatic, hydraulic. So it's, you know, it's, that's the only difference really, it's the power source. And you can see here, this is the electrical feed to the valve, which really the correct term is an actuator, but it's just an IAC valve, that's what they're called. So really quick, I'm just going to tell you what an IAC valve does. It's commonly used on fuel-injected vehicles, so that's when the fuel is sort of squirted in and the spark ignites it, and that's sort of how the engine works. So with an IAC valve, when the car's idling, uh, so here's your accelerator here. So when you press your accelerator, the throttle plate opens inside here, and that allows air into the engine. However, when you're idling, of course, your accelerator is going to be up in this position, and the throttle plate is going to be closed. So we need a way to get air into the engine, otherwise the car will stall and cut out, and that's some of the symptoms of a dirty or even possibly a damaged idle air control valve. So what happens here, the car's computer, which is the electrical cable uh, connected to the IC valve here, so this is where the computer tells it to open and close the valve inside the IAC to let enough air into the engine at idle. And it's all computer controlled in this car anyway. So it's, it's really easy. And again, in older carburetted vehicles, a similar device known as idle speed control actuator is used. So uh, the system's been around for a short while now. And I will mention in newer cars, electronic throttle bodies usually do not have one of these valves. So if you're having these symptoms, it could be something else, maybe a vacuum leak or something like that. So that's how they work. We're going to take it off and we're going to clean it. So now we've talked about what an uh, idle air control valve is and how it works. It's way easier to understand why this is happening now so this is why i've chosen to talk about this now so symptoms a rough idle so it could be an erratic uh, rpm here that probably means the valve is sticking on its way out and in it's just full up of carbon deposits and it's harder to move so it's causing an erratic idle you could have stalling at idle which means the iac is stuck in a closed position so it's not letting enough air into the engine it stalls out uh, so yeah, he hesitation, stalling, rough idle, high RPM, so you turn the car on, you're not pressing the accelerator or anything, but you have a high uh, idle here, so say maybe 1500 RPM or something like that, which is a high idle, and when your engine is warm, it still stays at 1500, whereas after a few minutes it should go a lot further down, maybe 700 RPM or something like that, and it doesn't do that. So that indicates that your uh, IAC valve is stuck in an open position, therefore letting too much air into the engine. 
And one final thing is when you put too much load on the engine. So when your car started, maybe you turn on the AC or lights or anything like that. You're putting an extra load on the engine and then it starts stuttering and things like that. Again, it could indicate uh, a closed IAC or a slightly sticking closed uh, IAC valve. So a good rule of thumb here is idle air control valve stuck open gives you a high idle and allowing too much air into the engine. Idle air control valve stuck closed, giving you a, a low idle, maybe stalling, cutting out, and that means it's not allowing enough air into the engine. So removal process, really easy. Uh, this is a Mustang GT 2003, so it looks exactly like this. Um, but any other car, very similar. You remove the electrical connector. Uh, I put this hose on myself, so yours might look slightly different, but we just want to take this sort of vacuum line off here, and then we're going to proceed with these bolts. So we have our first line off. Uh, sometimes to get to that bottom bolt, these are both 8mm. It's easier just to remove this line as well, just so you can get your socket in at the bottom there. And that gives you a lot more room to work with. So we're just going to crack open these two 8mm and we can pull the IAC valve off. Okay, so we've removed the uh, IAC valve here. We're just going to take that off now. Uh, the gasket, um, if it's really badly damaged, I do re recommend replacing it. However, if it looks quite nice like mine, I'd probably leave it. Just get some of the debris off there. If your IAC valve uh, orientation is sort of this direction, where um, it allows air to go up and over the throttle plate, you might want to just cover the hole so no debris get in there while you're cleaning this. So now the IAC valve's off the car. When you're uh, cleaning it, always keep the motor in an upright position so gravity doesn't sort of uh, get any liquid in there. We might damage the sensitive electrical components in there. Then the computer can't talk to it and you'll be in a worse situation. So just keep the motor in the air there. And then we're gonna just spray down each hole, down there and also down here. I'd start with this one because this one's slightly higher so it's going to drain out here anyway. Make sure this is nice and clean. Again, you can use a pipe cleaner if you wish, something like that. And then just clean out the bottom here. You can use something like a dental pick just to move the valve up and down, so one of these. And on this you make a model of the car with this uh, uh, control valve. You just uh, put the dental pick down this hole and you can move the valve up and down. It's quite hard to see because it's really in there, but you can sort of see there. You can move it up and down just to confirm, really, if it's stuck in there. So you can free that up and clean that out with the carb cleaner. So this is the aftermath here. This is all the uh, sort of carbon deposits there. If I just tip that out, you can see uh, there's granules and all kinds of stuff in there. So it's a really good thing we cleaned this. And again, five, ten minutes, that's all it takes. And you can have a nice running car at idle again. It's really worth, uh, well worth doing. So before we bolt this back down, just make sure that both mating surfaces are clean of debris and then we can get a nice uh, fit on there. Again, if the gasket's worn, I recommend replacing it. It's not that much money. I'll link all the parts in the description below. So just make sure you get the right orientation, bolt it on, and we're going to test it out. So Ford Mustang GT 2003 anyway, torque spec 10 foot pounds on these bolts, not much at all. The last thing you want to do is damage the uh, threads or, uh, or crack this, you do not want to do that, so don't go too crazy. Plug the electrical harness back in and replace the vacuum lines and then we're good to go. So we're back in the car, uh, engine's cold as you can see there, we're at, uh, what would you say, 1100 RPMs, so after a couple minutes when it's warm, we should drop uh, down a little more. So we've been started for a minute now, uh, engine's still actually uh, somewhat cold, uh, but yeah you can see the RPMs are dropping now, we're about almost 800 now, and it's not erratic at all. Uh, before, uh, on this vehicle, it was doing a high RPM thing, so I believe the valve was getting stuck open, uh, but now that's not the case at all. So it looks really solid, really steady, and that's what we're looking for. So I hope this video helped you. Um, yeah, watch our other videos, we do a lot more, and uh, good luck with yours.